Hello everybody, I'll talk today about CT basic physics, okay? Our lecture today, we will uh, talk about what's the meaning of CT, I'll talk about what's the basic physics of CT. CT, let us introduce myself, I'm Dr. Islam Kamal, okay, medical physics. CT machines, first of all, we have to talk about what's the meaning of CT. Okay, CT is abbreviation of computed tomography, computed tomography, computed tomography or computerized tomography, sometimes called computerized tomography, okay? Computerized, that means we are using computer, okay? But tomography is a Latin word, Latin word, okay? Which is composed from two words, tomo and graphy, tomo and graphy. Tomo means picture and graphy means to write or to be diagnosed okay so computer tomography computerized tomography using computer to get an image okay after i get an image i'll do diagnosis or write report for this case that's the meaning of computed tomography okay so this is the CT room layout as we see in this image okay here you will find the gantry any room of CT you will find this picture okay you will find here inside the room gantry okay this gantry contains x-ray tube and detectors okay and you find couch and you find UBS or other components uh, other components are important for uh, stabilizing current uh, going inside our city machines okay or supplying power supplying power and get data okay you need electric powers okay coming from outside to supply your ct machines okay and you need cables that transfer data okay coming out from the ct machines to show it on the control room to show it on the control room control room you will find computer uh, computer uh, which is responsible for acquisition and another one responsible for processing okay computer outside and you will find yourself here as operator working on the machine this is your general layout general layout of city room okay so this is component of gantry is important contains x-ray tube and detectors okay and here outside you will find two computer station one for acquisition and another one for processing okay acquisition means doing the scan itself Acquisition means doing is a scan. You scan the patient, okay? This station is responsible for doing the scan. Another station is responsible for image reconstruction, which is called the processing. Image reconstruction to make multiplanar reformatting image like coronal, axial, sagittal, and so on, okay? The basic principle of our work, you will find that X-ray tube, okay? X-ray tube produce X-ray this x-ray incident on the patient okay some of x-ray some amount of x-ray absorbed by the patient and another amount of x-ray transmitted from the patient okay this amount which is transmitted from the patient which is intensely transmitted will be detected or collected by row of detectors row of detectors okay these detectors okay collect them photons which is which are transmitted from the patients and translate it to image finally okay this is the main idea the main idea you have x-ray source to produce x-ray x-ray interact with our bodies okay our bodies our bodies organs absorb radiation and transmit others okay transmit another photons photons which are transmitted from the patient collected by the row of detectors these detectors have the ability and can convert the transmitted photons or the transmitted intensity to image finally on the acquisition on the acquisition uh, monitor okay on the monitor of operation it's clear for you okay let's move to here the x-ray tube producing x-ray this is the body organ you will find detector collect the image and translate it to the image but the image finally like this okay again this process here x-ray tube produce x-ray 
detectors translate the translated photons. This is the language of computer, which is the binary system, 0, 1. And finally, forming the image of CT like this. Okay? This is the main idea, or principle of all. Let us remember our X-ray image. You will find here, this is the X-ray image. You will find the lung here appear black and bone appear white. Why? You have to ask yourself, why? Lung here is appearing as a black <coughs> or dark image, but bone appear white. <coughs> or any pathology appear in different gray levels or shades of gray. Shades of gray from white to black because lung has low density, has low density because it's composed of air and the air has low density so lung has no has very low absorption of incident photons incident x-ray the x-ray which are incident x-ray photons which are incident on the lung lung will not absorb it because or absorb a little bit of radiation or small amount of radiation and a lot of radiation transmitted from lung okay with these photons which are transmitted from the lung absorbed by x-ray film causing burning of the film causing the blackening of the film so that's the reason why lung appear here in x-ray as dark image okay but bone has a higher density you see here as a bone or metal has a higher density okay this density enables the bone or enable high density material to absorb a lot of radiation okay so the transmitted photons will be very low, will be very low. So the transmitted photons have no ability to burn the X-ray film. So the film appear bright on this region. Okay? The, so the region on the film which are which is representing the bone appear as bright or black? Bright. But the region of the film which represent lung will appear dark or bright dark okay this is the main idea you know the, now the reason of this reason is clear for you okay it is related to the density of material okay this density of material enables the material itself to absorb or to attenuate the radiation attenuate the radiation so now bone is higher high attenuating material or low attenuating material High attenuating material, but lung? Low attenuating material. Why? Because bone has high density, but lung has low density. Okay? It's clear? <coughs> okay. This attenuation, it's called attenuation coefficient. Attenuation property represented by attenuation coefficient, which is called mu. This attenuation coefficient is very important. Ha bone has higher attenuation coefficient or low attenuation coefficient? High, because high density of bone. But lung has high attenuation coefficient or low attenuation coefficient? Low attenuation coefficient because lung is low density material. Okay, so now let us go through the city gantry to, to see what's inside the city gantry. Okay, now I'll remove the cover of city gantry oh my god what is inside you will find here one representing by x-ray tube and the collimator okay and two in the opposite direction you will find collimator so i'll find here x-ray tube in this direction and you will find in the opposite direction detectors okay and here you will find three tube controller which controls the tube the work of tube and four high frequency generator giving power okay and five onboard com computer this one onboard computer controlling all components inside the gantry and you'll find here six stationary computer this stationary computer connect the onboard computer which is number five to outside to the computer which, uh, which is outside in the control room okay this is called onboard computer and this is stationary computer okay now we know very well the components of CT gantry, okay? This is the X-ray tube. You will find here the X-ray tube is composed of here anode and 
this is anode, okay? And rotator, which is rotating the anode, okay? You will find the anode not, st not stationary anode, but rotating anode, okay? We will know why, why now we are using a rotating anode, not stationary anode, okay? And this is called filament, okay? Why is this component? This component is very important for production of X-ray. If you want to produce X-ray, you need X-ray tube. X-ray tube is composed of anode, cathode. Anode is a target material and cathode. Cathode is a source of electrons, source of electrons. Why? Because here you will find the main mechanism of X-ray tube production. You will find here, here is the target anode, which is composed normally from tungsten material, high melting point, uh, has high melting uh, point, okay? Because electron coming from filament or from cathode, okay? Moving towards the anode, okay? Collide with the anode material or the anode atoms, causing production of X-ray, causing production of x-ray okay so now i need a target of material this target of material must be high melting point has high melting point need very high temperature to be melt if we use target material has low melting point so after certain time the target anode will be <coughs> melted because the collision between the electrons and the target material causing loss causing loss 99 percent as a heat this collision interaction between electrons and target material causing loss a lot of heat this heat raising is a temperature of target material so if we use target material with very low or low melting point this high temperature will cause damage will cause melting. So now we are using tungsten material because of its high melting point, okay? So now, the electrons, which so we need a source of electrons, which is cathode or filament. This filament is connected by filament supply or power supply, causing moving current in the filament itself causing moving the current in the filament itself co causing the electrons to be liberated from the surface of the filament okay by thermionic emission okay current moving in the filament causing heating of the filament causing electron liberation electron liberations okay electrons which are which are liberated on the surface of hot filament how can i move how can I push? How can I accelerate the electrons or move the electrons from the cathode side to the anode side? Using KV, potential difference. So now, the filament is connected by electric current, okay? Which is the milliampere in our machines. When you adjust the milliampere, you are controlling now the current passing through the filament itself. If you increase the milliampere to be 200 or 300 and so on, you increasing the heating of filament. So, as such, increasing the number of electrons liberated from the filament itself. But if you want to move the electrons from the cathode side to the anode side, so you need to make potential difference between the anode and the cathode. Okay, potential difference it's called KV. This is the second parameter we are using it in CT machines. We are using milliampere parameters and KV. So now you know very well what's the function of KV. KV causing acceleration of electrons from the cathode side to the anode side. If we increase the KV from 80 KV to 140 KV, what will be happen? Increasing KV from 80 KV to 120 KV causing a higher acceleration from the electrons from the cathode side to the anode side that causing production of x-ray with high energy with high penetration power with high penetration power so increasing kv with any fat patient is mandatory if we select any patient 
fat patient, okay, like Elijah, for an instance, okay, so we need to increase the KV to higher level. But if we select same patient or child, th or same patient like me, okay, so we have to select 80 KV, small KV, okay? No, now you know very well what's the difference between low KV and high KV, okay? And what's the difference between low milliampere and the higher milliampere, okay? It's clear for you. So now, increasing milliampere causing increasing number of electrons. So number of electrons increase, so the probability of interactions between the electrons and target material increase. So number of X-ray produced will be increased, okay? So when we increase the KV, increasing the acceleration or giving more energy to the electrons so the electrons okay will the probability of interaction of electrons with the target material or the target atoms will increase so the number of photons on increasing kv causing increasing the number of photons and increasing the energy of photons okay but increasing milliampere causing increasing only number of photons. You know the difference? It's clear? Okay, let's move on. Here, electrons moving from the castle, from the castle going forward to target material. Okay? Collide with the electron, collide with atoms itself. There are two probabilities. First of all, you have to know something very important, that 99% of collisions of the electrons collision between, electron collision to the target atoms loss as heat, loss as heat, okay? 99% of these collisions between electrons and target atoms loss as heat, 99%. But the X-ray reduced is only 1%, okay? So, very am high amount of heat produced due to this interaction. That's the reason why sometimes we wait till the tube down, the tube very hot. So, giving us small, small time to the tube to be cooled down, okay? So now, 1% of this collision, 1% one per, one of this collision produced as X-ray, producing X-ray. So, there are two probabilities. One, Bremsstrahlung X-ray, and second is, first is Bremsstrahlung X-ray, second is characteristic X-ray, characteristic X-ray. First is Bremsstrahlung X-ray, which is produced from the interaction between the electron and the nucleus of target atoms okay the electron coming out from outside okay interact with the column field of the nucleus causing deflection of the electron this deflection causing the electron to lose some energy as x-ray this x-ray is called Bremsstrahlung x-ray okay but there are another type, sorry, uh, not this one, okay, can I explain for you here. Okay, now, okay, this is electrons, which is coming out from coming from where? Filament, cathode, okay? Collide with, interact with the nucleus, okay? This causing deflection of its path, deflection of electron from its path, causing producing of X-ray. This X-ray is called Bremsstrahlung X-ray. So, this is the first 
interaction or the first probability of interaction between electrons coming from cathode and the nucleus okay bremsstrahlung x-ray but if if the electron coming from cathode and interact with orbital shells around the electron electron shells around the around the nucleus this is the nucleus here is the electron shell k l m causing interact with electron in the k shell or the electron shell k causing to move the electron or to knock it out from the atom okay and causing vacancy leaves this place vacant okay now the electron coming out from the cathode okay and knock out the electron which is in k shell and knock it out from the shell what will happen to the place where the electron was there will be free the orbital will be like this free this place will be free k shell this is a nucleus but there are electron here in l shell this electron will move down from l shell to k shell to fill this gap to fill this gap okay and due to the transaction or transferring of electron from l shell to k shell loss energy this energy is called characteristic x-ray okay it's clear so there are two types bremsstrahlung x-ray and characteristic x-ray on imaging process in ct machine we depend on we depend on bremsstrahlung or characteristic x-ray which type which type of interaction we depend on imaging during imaging process we depend on bremsstrahlung or characteristic huh? the energy of photons of characteristic x-ray single energy or polyenergetic x-ray or polyenergetic monoenergetic or polyenergetic is monoenergetic why because the energy of x-ray here which is produced is equal to the energy difference between the two energy levels of electron shell okay so the energy of x-ray produced characteristic x-ray is equal to the energy difference between k and l shell but for x-ray or for bremsstrahlung x-ray you will find different energies not not one energy not one energy when that maybe you will find the electron deflected by this angle and you will find another electron deflected this angle or another electron deflecting and so on so you will find different angles according to the angle of deflection you will find different energy of bremsstrahlung x-ray okay the energy of x-ray in bremsstrahlung interaction depends on deflection depends on the deflection the angle of deflection of x-ray okay again there are two types bremsstrahlung and characteristic bremsstrahlung depends on the interaction between the electrons and the column field around the nucleus around the nucleus itself the x-ray produced from this interaction is polyenergetic or monoenergetic polyenergetic polyenergetic okay but in characteristic x-ray here this is the interaction between the electrons and electronic shells around the nucleus causing to knock causing knocking out of electron from k shell or l shell whatever okay and causing vacant place and the electron coming down or moving down from an, from higher energy level to lower energy level to fill the gap or the, to, to fill this vacant place okay causing 
producing of causing production of x-ray this x-ray is called characteristic or characteristic yes you're right characteristic this has this characteristic x-ray has one energy or mono energetic or poly energetic huh? mono energetic same energy or poly energy the energy of x-ray is is uh, equal to the energy difference so the energy difference will be single energy or different energies single energy so mono energetic so characteristic x-ray will be represented as single energy but greenish surrounding x-ray will be represented by uh, represented by spectrum spectrum of different energies you can see here look at this curve here this is the spectrum of bremish surrounding x-ray with different energy with different kv here to you here's the relation on the x-axis you'll find the wavelengths and y-axis here is intensity intensity represented the amount of x-ray photons and wavelengths represented by the energy of x-ray photons okay so now 20 kV using 20 kV the spectrum is very is wide spectrum or narrow spectrum narrow spectrum is higher has high intensity or low intensity is the first one here higher high intensity this is high int this is the intensity when we compare 20 kV and 50 kV which one has higher intensity 50 kV because increasing kV you remember increasing the number of x-ray photons and number of x-ray photon represented by intensity okay so 80 kV 50 kV has higher intensity but 20 kV has low intensity okay and 30 will be higher intensity 40 higher intensity 50 will be higher intensity okay so this is very strong x-ray spectrum or characteristic x-ray spectrum ah, this is spectrum so has one energy for here different energies on the x-axis different wavelengths different wavelengths means we have different energies of x-ray okay so in x-ray which which is produced from the x-ray tube which is from brimstrahlum is polyenergetic or monoenergetic polyenergetic okay so we have a spectrum let uh, look at this spectrum here okay this is a brimstrahlum x-ray spectrum and these spikes what's this spike huh spike represent single energy which is characteristic or brimstrahlum characteristics so the characteristic x-ray this is the shape of x-ray spectrum you will find broad spectrum like this which is premistralung x-ray and you will find here spikes okay which is characteristic x-ray characteristic x-ray you get now you get the point okay okay we now we finish the first part which is talking about the x-ray production let's move to another part which is CT generations CT generation to understand what's the meaning of CT generation there are different generation of CT now we are talking about multi slice CT multi slice multi detectors multi row of detectors but at first generation of CT you will find only one row one detector not to row one detector and you will find thin beam of x-ray as you see this is the x-ray tube and here you will find that detector we have only one detector one detector and this is the first image we get it it's very bad image low resolution low contrast image because this image to compose or to for imaging this image we takes around five minutes oh yeah five minutes to scan one image this is the first generation of CT we have only one detector and thin beam of x-ray 
same beam of X-ray. After that, move to the second generation. We used fan beam, fan beam, not thin beam. Okay, fan, as you see. This fan beam of X-ray, and we used row of detectors, row of detectors, not one detector, but row of detectors. Multiple row of detectors reach to 30 detector array. 30 detector array, okay? So now we can cover at first when you are scanning patient here for thin beam, you to cover one slice takes around five minutes because you are scanning one point. Here you scan, we scan one point. But in fan beam, we can scan different points. White beam, we have white beam, so we can scan white uh, uh, probe points or uh, certain number of points through the patient, okay, of patients, okay? So, that's the reason why the time of scanning in the second generation is less than the time of scanning of first generation, okay? And we are using here row of detectors reach to 30 detectors, not one detector, okay? As you see here, this is the fan beam of X-ray, okay? And this is the row of detectors. When you cover, now we cover large area of patients. Large area, so we can scan the patient in less time. When we talk about third generation, so we cover hold the patient, hold the patient, okay? We cover, and we are using fan beam, and we, uh, we increased the number of detectors, may reach to 900, 900 detectors, 900 detectors, okay? Not 30, like second generation. So we can co cover large area of patients, and we have detectors behind the patient to detect large number of photons transmitted from patients, okay? So, this is, as you see here, you can see, we cover large area of patients and the X-ray photons which are transmitted from patients detected by large number of detectors. Detected by large number of detectors, okay? Third generation. Most of machines in this world is related to third generation, okay? Now we are increasing number of rows not only one row, like in our machine here, we are using 16 row of detectors. Sometimes reach to 640 row of detectors. You see, patients, and using one row of detectors, okay, you cover small area. Dual row, you cover large area. Third, fourth, and so on. They reach 640 row of detectors. So the X-ray beam, which is, in, which is incident on the patient, detected by large rows of detectors. Large rows of detectors enable the machine to detect large area, to scan large area in very low time. Okay? This is the fourth generation. We are using here stationary detectors, station. This is the detectors and using fan beam of X-ray. The X-ray uh, tube rotate around the patient, but the X-ray detectors is stationary. Okay, so now you can cover, but it's very costly. Use highly cost this generation, so I'm not using. It. Fifth generation of CD, we are using four target anodes. Four target anodes. In the normal generation, we are using only one target anode. But here we are using four target anode and we are using the uh, electron gun. Electron gun, okay, electron gun, okay, enable us to produce very large amount of X-ray. And using this deflection gun, deflection coil, causing to deflect the electron beam to collide with the four target anodes. So the X-ray spectrum or the beam of X-ray will be higher, in higher amount, larger than the previous generations, okay? Here, the, this is the electron gun, okay, moving, and this is the focusing coil or deflection coil, which deflects the electron to collide with 
the target ring or the target anodes, okay, to cover large area of the patient by increasing the spectrum or increasing the amount of X-ray produced, okay. Sometimes we are using dual energy CT. Dual energy CT using one X-ray tube and one detector, okay, but making switching of KV. Sometimes using 80 kV and 120 kV switching, as you see here. Single source of X-ray and single row of detector, but switching kV from 80 and 140 kV. Another time using one X-ray tube, but using two types of detector. One specialized to detect 80 kV and another type specialized to detect 120 kV. Or using two X-ray tube and two types of detectors. Okay, and each one of X-ray tube specialized to produce certain value of KV. This dual energy technology has a lot of purpose, okay, and a lot of uh, a lot of purpose in the field of uh, diagnostic imaging. Okay, here is the X-ray tube moving around the patient, and the X-ray beam transmitted from the patient and detected and using sometimes co-filter back projection or the construction algorithm, okay, translate this image from back projection to filtered back projection. This is the image is called raw back projection image before filtration. But here, using the filtration technique to remove all signal, unused signal or not important signal for us to get the final image of the CD. Okay, here, you see, make projections, this is the image, Back projection image, and this one is filtered back projection image. Sometimes in the UCT machine you will find filtered back projection or additive reconstruction algorithm like I dream in our Sinovision machine. Okay. Here we are talking about the aim of CT scan. What's the aim of CT scan? Less patient absorbed dose and optimum diagnostic image. If you are physicist or you are a technologist intelligent enough to get optimum diagnostic image with very low dose with low dose this is your balance and this is your concept you have to put it in your mind when you are operating any machine any patient or operating any machine you have to make a protocol okay to get this to get this idea or to get this concept to get optimum diagnostic image with low patient dose with low patient dose. Okay, we will stop here, okay? And we'll move to another video, okay? Next time, tomorrow, we will talk about the patient dose calculations, okay? Thank you very much Thank you. for your time.